So that's the current practice. Let's just take a look at how that affects us and see what sort of problems we identify using that, and then we'll look at the solution. So currently we produce many models, different levels of detail, different parties creating these models. We have estimates that are progressed at different speeds and different levels of detail as we get more information. We also have the same thing for the schedules. And in current situation, without having an MPS, we generally find it difficult to tie this information together in a collaborative way, not knowing exactly what is going to be in the model before you get it. It's difficult and it's going to take a lot more time to use that model for estimating and for generating, so for generating quantities and creating our cost plans. And the same thing for scheduling. If we're going to use quantities that are from the model in a location-based format in order to better um, supply more granular information for our schedules, then we need to know what we're going to get. Otherwise, there's a planning period. When you receive the model, you start planning rather than you start implementing. And that delay is, is a, a severe problem when we all know that we need the information as soon as possible. So we've mentioned that changing process is difficult. Individually, if we have somebody on their own, it's pretty easy to change one person. It's relatively a low level of change for a department on its own. But when we start to say that we're changing a company and cross-department change, it's really starting to get a lot more difficult. BIM touches on every area within, a, uh, within construction. Uh, BIM is not a sidecar. It's not something that is just going to change one department. This is something that really does affect, and if you are looking for value from implementing it, then it's something that's going to touch many other departments as well. So it's not just from the, uh, on a construction team, it's not just pre-contracts, it's not just bidding, it's not the, just the biz dev guys, it's not just the construction team. Um, it, it's also involving for example, uh, the billing, accounting, um, human resources need to understand what type of people we need, uh, legal implications, uh, certainly from a marketing sense, as we said. And it just affects so many people if you're going to get the value from it and if you're going to do this right. What makes it even worse is that we faced, we're faced with cross-company change by this model being created by somebody else or many other parties and trying to work with them to create the data and have a seamless link between all of that information, it's really pretty difficult and it's really a lot of process change. But we're saying that it can be a lot cleaner and easier if we create the MPS. And unfortunately what we, what we have is this confidence um, curve, as we could put it, we don't want to fall out of the bottom. We don't want to have total loss, loss of confidence in implementing something. And when we've got a team of, of 20 people uh, that are responsible for a, a high-rise construction project and each person has their own opinion about what to do and how to do it, it's, it's difficult if we are not all on the same page, not all having the same plan, not all having the same expectations. And if we go through, uh, I'd use a, a hop out of our, the, the um, MPS example from um, a 3D stance and just look at 4D as an example. We've, we've seen many people adopt a, a glued approach, a, a linked approach to 4D and experienced a lot of problems um, when the data has to be updated and relinked and lots of rework. And we've had conversations with people that generally have lost confidence in the value that 4D can provide. And what we're trying to, to do is make sure that by integrating everything in a more clear and constructive way, that collaboration and that 
uh, that value is known and pretty obvious when we are not having those problems, not having that um, rework and the disruption in updating and keeping links updated. So this is about integrated construction management and it's trying to bypass that um, potential for people losing confidence because the plan has a real structure behind it. And this is the path that we see people following for the MPS and using MPS to drive a more certain output. So to define what we have as a problem, we've got lots of different people working together. Many people working design pre-construction phases and the, the BIM process allows for many releases of information. The information is increased in richness as we go through. It's great for facing uh, better decisions and essentially if we are if we're not working on the same hymn sheet, if we're not talking the same language, then we're going to come across the problems that we've seen there. And in, in, in essence, what we're trying to do is have a plan in order to make sure that the integration for using BIM in design cost and time is completely a, a known entity before we start. So the answer to these three problems is, is pretty clear with NPS. I'm just going to talk about how they affect our teams at the moment and uh, we'll, we'll then look at the solution of NPS. So inconsistency, as we are generating models, we need to have a consistent level of detail. On the left we have two screenshots of potentially the same building, but if we're if we're expecting the boxes below as a mapping model and we get the detail above as the actual construction elements, then we're not going to be able to do what we thought we were going to be able to with that, that data. So knowing what we're going to get at a certain point in time in case of the level of detail, it's really important for us in knowing uh, what to expect. Inconsistency in object use uh, potentially we could have one foundation modeled with a wall and another one modeled with a slab. We're not saying that that's not um, useful and we're certainly saying that it's, um, it's really good for the design team to have that flexibility. But what we are saying is that if that, that flexibility is desired by the design team, then we need to know what they're going to choose in certain situations and be able to plan for that in our knowledge base. So in our connection to our cost and estimating cost planning, we need to understand what objects are going to be derived, which objects are going to be created. Here we have an example of inconsistent 2D and 3D information being created. If you have many different modelers, design designers, design professionals working on this building and one person models a door and on floors three to six and then somebody else on all the, the other floors, all they do is put in the 2D, they put a, an opening for the door, but they don't actually put the object. We need to eliminate this inconsistency. It's, it will cause us a problem. If we count the number of doors, then we won't know that we're missing doors which have only been included in the 2D line work. So we need to make sure that the data, the end output is, is usable. From a predictability stance, we need to understand what we're going to get. This is, um, kind of said it a few times, it's not going to be easy to create an estimate if we don't know what we're going to get from the model. And the scheduling is the same. What level of detail from the estimate are we going to get quantity-wise to generate our scheduled tasks? In the example on the right hand side, if we're, all we're looking for is square foot pricing and we get a um, highly detailed virtual mock-up, it's not going to be as useful. And here in the example where we're looking at the columns, do we want them the full length or do we not? Are we interested in uh, using, in allowing the architects to have a, an easy life? and for us to include an assumption in 
our formula to extract the quantities between floors that aren't required, or are we going to request that these are created in exactly the way and the breaks between each of the columns so that we know we can have a, um, an accurate quantity takeoff without having to make assumptions. Lots of different people, we, we saw that in that process change across different companies was very difficult. When we have several different parties and project teams in lots of different locations, that communication is, is highly important and is, is certainly difficult. We need to have a system to notify if something changes uh, in order to understand and, and to so when somebody changes something, that notification should allow them to replan their work and uh, knowing that early is uh, an important factor. <clears throat> 